at a dice. Alright, on today's lesson, we're going to discuss um, the importance of overcoming sin. Okay? Um, as you come into the knowledge that you are Israelite, it is, it is more than important that you know that you will not inherit the kingdom unless you overcome your sins. Alright, let's start off with Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. Alright, um, this scripture in, in a summary tells exactly that. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. When it's all said and done, read. Fear God and keep his command. Mm -hmm. For this is the whole duty of man. All right. So the reason why we have breath in our bodies is to keep God's commandments. All right. Um, so in regards to overcoming sins, this steps in it. All right. Because, yeah, you're going to stumble. You will stumble. But the first step to conquering and overcoming your sins is identification. All right, it's very important that you are aware of the sins and the uh, strongholds that you that you struggle with on a daily basis. Um, give me First Peter chapter four verse twelve. First Peter chapter four verse twelve. Mm -hmm. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trap. Think it not what? Think it not strange concerning the fiery trap. So the scripture says, don't think it's strange because you're battling with something. All right, read on. Which is to try you. Which is to what? Which is to try you. All right, so all of us are going to go through whatever it is, all right? That's just uh, the Most High is proving us, all right? The same way he pr had to prove our forefathers, all right? From there, let's go to Acts chapter 14, verse 22, all right? So don't think it's strange. Don't think nobody else goes through what you're going through as well, all right? Give me that. Acts chapter 14, verse 22. Confirming the souls of the disciples mm -hmm. and exhorting them to continue in the faith that we much, that we must through much tribulation, through much tribulation, read, enter into the kingdom of God. All right. So that's the only way we can enter the kingdom of heaven. All right. We have to go through a lot. All right. Not just go through it and just keep failing. We must overcome our trials. All right. From there, let's go to Matthew 26 and 41. This is still on the, um, Mind frame of identifying and being aware of your sins. All right, give me that. Matthew chapter 26, verse 41. Mm -hmm. Watch and pray. Do what? Watch and pray. So it says, watch. So be on the lookout. All right. That's how a lot of us fall because we're not we're not constantly watching. This is an everyday battle because as soon as you chill, as soon as you say, you know what? I'm feeling confident. You know, I'm feeling good. Like I, I can't fall. All right. So the second you feel comfortable, here comes Satan. All right. When you got idle time, here he comes. All right. Read that again. Watch and pray mm -hmm. that he enter not into temptation. That he enter not. As a matter of fact, can you give me idle? Give me yeah. that real quick. So it's important that when you have time alone, all right, that try to get out of that. So sort of like this. If you're a baby in this truth, don't be alone too much. All right, because that's. That's when Satan's going to play with your mind. Give me that. Sirach chapter 33, verse 27. Mm -hmm. Send him to labor, that he be not idle. That he be not what? That he be not idle. That he be not idle. So send him to labor. All right? Say if you can only work a part-time job, you better be searching for another job. All right? Say send him to labor, that he be not idle. Why is that? But idleness mm -hmm. teaches much evil. Idleness teaches much evil. All right? So let's go back to Matthew 20, 26. All right? Matthew chapter 26, verse 41. Mm -hmm. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. That ye enter not into temptation, all right? So we will be tried, but if we're always on the watch, at least, at least we're prepared, all right? Then you can actually make a conscious decision, all right? So if you are paying attention to your surroundings, what's happening, what actions are you making to put yourself in these situations, that's, that's the first step in the battle, all right? From there, let's go to Sirach chapter 4, verse 20. This is starting to be one of my other favorite scriptures, Sirach 4 and 20. All right? Y'all should put this into your memory as well. Give me that. Sirach chapter 4, verse 20. Mm -hmm. Observe the opportunity. Observe the opportunity. All right? The Most High God calls these tribulations and trials an opportunity. An opportunity to show what you're made of. To show the Most High God that you are serious. All right? Read on. And beware of evil. And be what? And beware of evil. Being aware is the same as watching out. All right? Being on the lookout for evil. All right? From there, let's go to Colossians 2 and 8. All right? There's clues. There's um signs all up in this Bible to show you that you must always be in your P's and Q's. Always be on the lookout. 
All right, because the Satan, because Satan, he's doing his job. All right, it's up to you to do your job so you can make it to the kingdom. All right, all right? give me that. Colossians chapter two and verse eight. Uh huh. Beware lest any man spoil. Be what? Beware lest any man spoil. So what's that saying? Be aware lest any man spoil you. All right. For example, Christian church, right? Mm -hmm. If you are, are you? If you are really trying to be aware lest any man spoil you, you should ask questions. You should see, like, Pastor, why you got a bald head for? According to um, Leviticus twenty-one and five, it says that you shouldn't have a bald head. Matter of fact, give me Malachi 2 and 7. Gotcha. All right? You should be aware. If any man professes himself to be a man of God, you should question them. Why aren't they keeping God's commandments? Give me that. Malachi chapter 2, verse 7. Mm -hmm. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. So if you pro uh, profess to be a man of God, you should keep knowledge. And what is that knowledge? And they should seek the law at his mouth. They should seek what? And they should seek the law. At his mouth. Alright, so if you weren't, let's go back to Colossians 2 and 8. So if you are really sincerely trying to be aware, alright, that's those are some of the things, those are some of the actions you should bring forth. Read it all the way through. Beware lest any man spoil you mm -hmm. through philosophy and vain deceit. Through philosophy and vain deceit. That sounds just like Christianity today. All it is is doctrines of man, um, a new philosophy, what is it called? The, the kingdom principles. Mm -hmm. All of this stuff that has nothing to do with the Bible. Mm -hmm. All right, sounds just like the Christian church to me. Read on. And after the tradition of men. After the tradition of who? Men. What men? The so-called white men, the Edomites today, that have us in captivity. Our ancestors learned Christianity from our oppressor, right. our slave masters, all right? So the scripture, he, the, the Most High God left these instructions for us to get right, all right? He's telling us to be aware of these things. From there, let's go to uh, 2 Ezra chapter 7, verse 6, all right? Because you have to understand, we are in that wicked city, Babylon the Great, all right? It's so easy to fall in Babylon. Any any uh, sin or anything you like is here, and, it, and it's legal, all right? Give me that. Second Ezra, chapter 7, verse 6. Mm -hmm. There is also another thing. A city is built and set upon a broad field, uh -huh. and it's full of all good things. Full of all good things, read. The entrance thereof is narrow mm -hmm. and set in a dangerous place to fall. Set in a dangerous place to fall, all right? We are a curse that was put on the Israelites is that we'd be scattered, all right? And we brought we were brought over here to Babylon the Great to serve our captivity, all right? So here we were brought to repent. We were brought here to be proven. So this is that city right here, Babylon the Great, all right? In order to make it to New Jerusalem, we are set in a dangerous place to fall in Babylon the Great. Read on. Like as if it were a fire on the right hand, uh -huh. and on the left a deep water. Read. And only one path between them both. Mm -hmm. And even between the fire and the water so small, there could but one man go there at once. Only one man can make it. You can't do this for your mom because of your brother or your sister, all right? It's that serious. Read on. If this city now were given unto a man for an inheritance, mm -hmm. if he never shall pass the danger set before, how shall he receive this inheritance? Read that part again. If he never shall what? If he shall never pass the danger said before. So it says, so if you cannot overcome your sins, right. read. How shall he receive this inheritance? How are you going to make the kingdom? All right, because the kingdom is only for those who overcome. All right, from there, let's go to James chapter 1. We start at verse 2. All right, it's very important, my brothers and sisters, man. You must understand, don't, don't do this walk in vain. All right, you need to focus on keeping the commandments. Don't focus on... Um, being uh, the precept king. Don't focus on being the the best dressed female. Focus on behind closed doors and nobody else is looking. Focus on those times. All right, because that's when you're really gonna be tried. All right, give me that. James chapter one verse two. Mm -hmm. My brother, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptation. All right, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations because in First Peter it said. Don't think it's strange. All right, so you already know it's gonna come. So instead of being sloth, it's like, oh, I'm, I'm tired of this. I can't ever get over it. Uh, man, every time I go through this, I, I crumble, man. I'm trying to get better. Quick, stop all the sob stories. It says, do what? My brother, count it all joy. Count it all joy, all right? Because if you coming in this thing, um, crying about it, being half, going half in it, you're gonna fall every time. All right, it says, count it all joy, read. When you fall into divers temptation, mm -hmm. knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. That the trying of your faith worketh patience. So the next step is patience, all right? So when you're in these situations, when you knew it is true. When you knew, you're, you're always ready to do things fast. You feel what I'm saying? You're not thinking about what you do because you don't have patience yet. 
And only through trials and tribulation and, and uh, wisdom and studying and going through things, that's going to get you the patience. Read verse 3 again. Verse 3, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. The trying of your faith will work your patience, all right? From there, let's go to uh, Romans chapter 5, uh, start at verse 3. All right, so now we're focusing on patience. First, you must be aware. Step two, you have to be patient. All right, give me that. Romans chapter 5, verse 3. Mm -hmm. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. We do what? But we glory in tribulations you also. You glory in tribulations. That's how you have to look at it. This is literally, literally the Most High God just hands you an exam. That's what it is. So you must say, oh, yes, he's handing me an exam. This is uh, going to be on my permanent record. This is going to be in my transcripts. This is what he's going to look at when it's time to get judged. So it says we glory in tribulation. Yep. Read. Knowing that tribulation worketh patience. Knowing that tribulation worketh patience. Read. And patience experience. And patience what? And patience experience. Experience. All right. So that goes hand in hand with being aware. All right. Because when you experience things, you can actually see it before it's coming. All right, because hold up, this is the same. This is the same way I felt last time. Through your experience, now you're gonna be patient. It's like, oh, all right, let me calm down. Let me take a step back so I don't make the same mistake. All right, was that uh, was that down before yet? No, sir. Read. And experience hope. And experience hope. Exactly. Read. That's it. Okay. From there, let's go to um, Romans 12 and 12. All right. So right now we're focusing on patience. So. Through experience, your patience is going to come even better. It's going to be, it's going to lighten the load. Will will the struggles and temptations go away? No. But will it be more manageable? Will you be able to take them on? Yes. Give me a Romans 12 and 12. Romans chapter 12, verse 12. Rejoicing in hope. Patient in tribulation. Read that again. Rejoicing in hope. Re patient in tribulation. Patient in tribulation. So instead of, you know, just doing what your flesh wants you to do, you're thinking now. So you are in the fire. Now you literally, with a, a clear mind, a clear conscience, you can actually see what's going on and you're able to make the right decision. Read that all the way through. Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Continuing instant in prayer. All right. And uh, we're going to follow back in James, but it's the, in the scripture it says, if you want anything, just ask the Most High. He'll give it to you. All right. But from there first, we're going to go to Proverbs 24 and 16, just to show you. Before you get that experience, most likely you will fall a few times. But don't think that's okay. That's not okay. All right? That's just to get on your feet. That's just the most I'm proving you to see if you're going to fall into mischief or are you going to get back on your feet and be righteous. Give me that. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 16. Mm -hmm. For a just man falleth seven times. All right. Um, Ezekiel 18, first. Ezekiel 18 and 5. What does it mean to be just? Because a lot of people may think a just man is anybody. All right, a just man is one who keeps God's laws. We're going to find that out. Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 5. Mm -hmm. But if a man be just and do that which is lawful and right. The man be just and do which is lawful and right. All right, let's go back to Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 16. For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. It does what? And riseth up again. So that was, those are those tribulations, you know, at the beginning because you don't have much experience. You may fall, but you, the key part is riseth up again. Now, there's a separation between the wicked and the righteous. Let's hear that back into that. But the wicked fall into mischief. But the wicked going to fall into mischief. They're going to keep doing it. So don't think you're just if you have not overcome your sins. And you, you understand, you will fall. But if you continue to do it and you don't see no progress, after a year or two, something's wrong with you. Something is seriously wrong with you. You're doing this, just doing this in vain. That's why your focus needs to be on overcoming your sins and not on pleasing men. All right? From there, let's go to uh, 2 Ezra chapter 16, verse 76. This goes hand in hand with this Proverbs. All right? Because, you know, at the beginning, you, you're going to stumble, but don't let your sins take control of you, okay? Give me that. Second Ezra, chapter 16, verse 76. Uh-huh. And the guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts, saith the Lord God, let not your sins weigh you down. Don't let your sins weigh you down, all right? It's not telling you to keep sinning and you'll be okay. No, it's saying... Don't let your sins weigh you down to the point where you can't even function anymore. Now you're just uh, now you're just living for to sin, not keeping God's commandments anymore. From there, let's go to um, Romans 6 and 12 to get better understanding of what that scripture is trying to say. 
All right? Because many a time you might get in that pity party, you might go back to your old ways and start feeling sorry for yourself. But you can't do that if you're trying to uh, sincerely overcome your sins. Give me that. Romans chapter 6 verse 12. Mm -hmm. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. Let not what? Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. Don't let sin get dominion over you. All right? Don't let sin be your God now. To the point where you're like, oh, I can't overcome it, so I'm just going to do it anyway. All right? Don't let that happen to you because if you don't keep his commandments diligently and sincerely, that's exactly what will happen to you. Uh, from there, give me um, give me a Baruch chapter four verse twenty eight. All right, because we are we are we are more than conquerors. We must endure to the end. All right. So if you fall, all right, don't come back with the same the same thing that made you fall the first time. Don't come back. Okay, if somebody coming at you full speed and you go half and they knock you over, the next time they come at you full speed, are you gonna do the same thing? You gotta think about this. Give me that. Baruch chapter 4 verse 28 For as it was your mind to go astray from God uh -huh. So being returned, seek him ten times more Seek him how much time? Seek him ten times more You must seek the most high God ten times more than what you were doing before Because apparently what you did before did not work right. So you must reevaluate your strategy right. Which is in these scriptures And you need to sincerely seek him Search these scriptures to combat whatever you're going through right. You need a different playbook Exactly, exactly, exactly. Let's go to um, James chapter one, two, uh, 1 and 2, then we're going to read down something. Gotcha. All right, exactly. You need a different playbook. You need a different strategy. All right. James chapter 1, verse 2. My brother, count it all joy when you fall into divers' temptations, mm -hmm. knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. But let patience have a perfect word, uh -huh. that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. So that's what we need to... You know, you need to come to. We need to be perfect, which is keeping God's commandments. All right, read. If any of you lack wisdom. If any of you lack something, all right? If you lack strength. If you lack um, um, how you speak to people. If you lack being cordial with people, being hospitable. If you lack any of that, do what? Let him ask of God. Let him ask who? Let him ask of God. Know your wicked family members. Let him ask of God. Know your father for advice. Let him ask of God. Ask the most high God. Read. That give it to all men. And if you ask, he'll give it to you. All right, read. Liberally and uh, upbraid of not. And he's not going to hold back if you come to him in sincerity. All right, read. And it shall be given to him. Uh-huh. Read. But let him ask in faith. Nothing wavering. Nothing wavering. So don't come to the Most High God second guessing yourself. Don't do that. Because he's not dealing with the double minded man. Just like verse 8 said, he's not dealing with a double minded man. All right, read that uh, 6 again. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. Mm -hmm. They have no temptation taken you, but such as common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. All right, so. First, number one, is that everybody, well, somebody else is going through the same thing or have already been through it. The second thing is that he knows how much you can take, all right? So he's not going to push you to the limit where you have no choice but to sin. He's always going to leave a, a place for you to escape, to get out of that situation. All right, read that again, that last part. But God is faithful uh -huh. who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. Read. But will with the temptation also make a way to escape also make a way to escape so there's no excuse and I, I know this from my own personal experience there's no excuse it's either you choose to sin or you choose to flee all right and we and you and you know that viewers you know that as well so when it comes down to it the most I you don't want to hear that it's either you keep the commandments or you die all right uh, from there let's go to Micah chapter 4 verse 10 all right because you have to now reform your mind frame. Um, now think, since you already know you got to go through something, if you start feeling comfortable, that's a, red, that's a red flag. There's something wrong with that. If you ever feel comfortable while in this truth, something is wrong. And you need to be looking because something's going to happen. All right, give me that. Micah chapter 4 verse 10. Mm -hmm. Be in pain. Be in what? Be in pain. Is pain comfortable? Pain is not something that's comfortable. Pain hurts, right? Last time I checked, right. pain hurts. Read and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in travail. Mm -hmm. For now shalt thou go forth out of the city, and thou shalt dwell in the field, and thou shalt go even to Babylon. There thou shalt be delivered. There we shall be delivered. We're here now. But it said we must labor 
and be in pain like a woman in travail. All right. So we cannot be comfortable. We must say, what can I do to um, push this truth more? When you find yourself alone, hit up a brother or sister. Say, hey, Shalom, what you doing? Um, you want to throw some burgers on the grill? You want to uh, go over some scriptures? All right. Those are the things you have to do to overcome these sins. Get yourself out of those situations. So you must be aware. You must have patience. Through patience, you get experience. All right. Um, I'm sorry, through experience, you get your patience, okay? And you must not be comfortable while in captivity, all right? Um, let's go to Matthew 24 and 13, all right? Because these words are very important. So it says pain. Now let's see uh, what the word is in Matthew 24 and 13. Matthew 24, verse 13. Uh-huh. But he that shall endure. Shall in what? That shall endure. Endure. Endure does not mean something that's easy, all right? Endure means you have to go against something. Overcome something. Read that again. But he that shall endure unto the end. Until how long? Until the end. Until the end. So if you have good streaks and then you fall off, that was in vain. All right? You must endure until the end. Read. The same shall be saved. Mm -hmm. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. Then shall the end come. And you're seeing the gospel being preached everywhere now. The most High God set it up to allow us to get you to. That was the worst thing. That was the dumbest thing our enemy could have ever done. Right. All right. Uh, from there, let's get Romans 15 and 4. All right. Another, this is another tool. All right. This is how you're going to overcome your sins. This is how you're going to get that comfort and hope that you can even overcome your sins. All right. Give me that. Romans chapter 15, verse 4. Mm -hmm. For whatsoever things were written up for a time were written for our learning, mm -hmm. that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Might have hope. So this is how you're going to get your patience, all right? When you're going through something, read a scripture, meditate on that scripture. Read about a situation where somebody was in the scriptures was going through the same thing you was going through and how they overcame. Or you read about their punishment from not overcoming their sin, all right? Uh, from there, let's go to James 1 and 13. Now we're going to focus on how temptation can lead into sin because you must understand just because you tempted that doesn't mean you sin all right being tempted is not sin but the action that comes after falling into that temptation that turns into sin give me that james chapter 1 verse 13 mm -hmm. let no man say when he is tempted i am tempted of god read but god cannot be tempted with evil uh-huh neither tempted he any man you know what um let's go to that in job could you give me that was that uh, one and six Job 1 and 6, because it said, uh, let no man say that when he is tempted, he's tempted with God. And that's exactly right. God has somebody he uses to tempt you. All right? Give me that. Job chapter 1 and verse 6. Uh-huh. Now, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Mm -hmm. And Satan came also among them. And Satan came also among them. Read. And the Lord said unto Satan, which cometh thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth, mm -hmm. from walking up and down in it. So, he said going to and fro on the earth and walking up and down in it. So, yes, he is the prince of the air. He's here. Read. And the Lord said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job? So the Most High God said, Have you considered my servant Job? So, yeah, the Most High God uses Satan to tempt you, but it's not God himself. All right? Let's go back. All right? So you see how the Most High orchestrates it? He has everything in place. All right? Read that again from the top. James chapter 1 verse 13. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. Uh -huh. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. And we just read that he uses Satan to tempt with evil. Read. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. So, drawn away from his own lust. So, Officer O.C. If Officer O.C. struggled with gluttony, all right, and not, um, not smoking. So, if I put a cigarette right here, the brother's going to just be chilling. But if I freaking put a plate of uh, food stacked in front of him, that brother going to be sweating bullets. All right? Because it just said, read that part again. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. Drawn away from his own lust. So that's where temptation comes. You cannot be tempted of something that you don't even struggle with. All right? Re uh, read on. And in types. Mm -hmm. Then when the lust hath conceived. It says then. Now then, here's the point. It says then when the lust hath conceived. So if you really lusting after something. So, for, so if I put that stack of pancakes in front of them. Just keep it there. 
All right, it says now it says then when that lust of conceives after he's already eaten and he's full, read it bring it forth sin. It bring it forth what? It bring it forth sin. All right, so the smartest thing for the brother should be he should get up and leave the table. All right, because he knows if he sits here any longer. And that, that stack of pancakes is sitting there after he's like, already got a full belly. Eventually, he's going to say, um, no, nah, I'm, not, I'm not really full. I'm just going to, you know, let me put some syrup on it because it, it can make it go down like a little easier and I wouldn't really feel it as much. That's, that's how your mind can play on it. All right. So we just covered that temptation is not the sin. It's the action that comes behind after falling for that temptation. Finish that up. All right. When it is finished, bring it forth death. Uh huh. So read that all the way through, clean for me. Then, when lust hath conceived, it bring it forth sin. Uh huh. And sin, when it is finished, bring it forth death. Bring it forth death. That's from the wages of sin is death. Romans six and twenty three. From there, let's go to Baruch chapter four verse one. All right. This is what you should always be thinking about. It's life or death, good and evil. Keeping the commandments, not keeping the commandments. And we're going to hear the reward and the punishment. Give me that. Baruch chapter 4 verse 1. Mm -hmm. This is the book of the commandments of God mm -hmm. and the law that endure forever. Read. All they that keep it shall come to life. So all they that keep God's commandments will receive life. Read. But such as leave it shall die. Such as leave it shall die. Read on. Turn thee, O Jacob, and take hold of it. Walk in the presence of the light thereof. That thou mayest be illuminated. Give not thy honor to another, nor the things that are profitable unto thee to a strange nation. All right. From there, let's go to James chapter 4, verse 12. So now, we've already talked about being aware. All right. We talked about experience. We talked about patience. We talked about temptation not being the sin. It's the action after temptation. All right. Now let's talk about some rewards. All right. Of overcoming. All right, give me that. James chapter four, chapter one, verse twelve. Mm -hmm. Blessed is the man that endures temptation. Blessed is the man that what? Blessed is the man that endures temptation. Uh huh. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. The crown of life is the kingdom of heaven. All right, that is your reward for overcoming your sins. Read on. Which the Lord hath promised to them that love. Him. That love him, and what is love? Keeping God's commandments. All right. From there, let's go to First Peter chapter four, verse thirteen. Now we covered, that was the first scripture actually, 1 Peter 4 and 12, said don't think it's strange. Now let's read verse 13, see what that says. 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 13, but rejoice in as much as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, mm -hmm. ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. Alright, when his glory shall be revealed, the only way you're going to see that glory is if you overcome. Because if you're not, you're going to be burnt here with the other nations, alright? Uh, from there, let's go to Revelation 21 and 7. All right. Revelation chapter 21 verse 7 mm -hmm. He that overcometh shall inherit all things Shall inherit some things He that overcometh shall inherit all things I mean we'll just be eating good but we'll still be poor Shall inherit all things So you're going to get it all All right, all the blessings, all the promises All the inheritance that is spoken of in this Bible Read it And I will be his God and he shall be my son Uh huh Alright from there let's go to 2 Ezra chapter 9 uh, verse 7 all right, starting at verse 7. 2 Ezra, chapter 9 and verse 7. Mm -hmm. And everyone that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his work. By his what? By his work. So that's how you're able to get the kingdom. Escape, escape what's coming to Babylon. You must escape by your works. You must overcome. Read. And by faith. Whereby ye have believed, mm -hmm. shall be preserved from the said perils, Read. and shall see my salvation in my land, mm -hmm. and within my borders, for I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. Alright, so it's, that's the promise from the beginning. Alright, you got to keep his commandments to, to receive, to, to be able to uh, be along Christ in New Jerusalem. Alright, from there, let's go to uh, Revelations 22 and 14. Revelation right. chapter 22 verse 14. Mm -hmm. Blessed are they. That do his commandments. You see how it's redundant. It says, blessed are they that do his commandments. This is just, it's letting you know that there is a reward. All right, read. That they may have the right to the tree of life. To the tree of life. Keep my commandments and live. All right. From there, let's go to Revelation 7, 7 and 14. We're going to take some time on this. 7 and 14. Mm -hmm. Revelation chapter 7, verse 14. Mm -hmm. And I said unto him, sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, these are they which came out. Of great tribulation. Out of what? Out of great tribulation. So it says, these are those who came out of great tribulation. All right, read. And have washed their robes 
and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. That's just the purification. All right, that's that righteousness. All right, read on. Therefore are they before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. So that's what we're going to be doing. And that's a beautiful thing. All right, serving the most high God every day and night. Just like we should be doing right now. We're rehearsing the righteous acts. Read. And he that sit him on the throne shall dwell among them. So we, should, we will be dwelling among Christ. All right. We will be. That's something that you just say, but you don't really think about that. It says we should do what? And he that sitteth on the throne mm -hmm. shall dwell among them. We, so Christ will be dwelling among us. We will be amongst the, the master, the, the king. All right, read. They shall hunger no more. We shall what? They shall hunger no more. Because in Babylon, this is where we hunger. Read. Neither thirst anymore. Neither thirst. And this is this is where we thirst. We had to go to our enemies in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and one of all things here. Right. Read. Neither shall the sun light on them, uh -huh. nor any heat. So it's going to be beautiful and be paradise. All right, read. Really? For the lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them. So, the, so Christ is going to be feeding us. He's going to take care of us. He's going to be our strength. No longer do we have to depend on our enemy for everything. Right. Read. Really? And shall lead them away. And shall lead them unto living fountains of war. Mm -hmm. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. So, so those nights where, you know, uh, your, your, uh, your utilities got cut off because you couldn't pay the bill. Or that night when your son got gunned down by, by your enemy. He's going to wipe away your tears for being diligent and keeping his commandments. Right. All right. From there, let's go to Deuteronomy 4 and 9. All right. So after all of that, after all the scriptures we went through, all right, if you're not going to study these and pay close attention, he did it in vain. All right, read that. Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 9. Mm -hmm. Only take heed to thyself. Keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen. Lest thou forget. You don't want to forget what you've seen and heard today. Read. And lest they depart from the heart. All the days of thy life, mm -hmm. but teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. So these are the things you must teach to your sons and daughters, all right? This is the good news. This is the gospel right here. All right, give me 1 Samuel 2 and 3. 1 Samuel chapter 2 and verse 3. Mm -hmm. Talk no more so exceeding proud. Read. Let not arrogancy come out of your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, mm -hmm. and by him actions are weighed. So it's time to stop playing around Israel and overcome these sins. With that, we say shalom. Shalom. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this and join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.